shot were some of the, the ideal qualities. We have a couple of um, portraits here, and you may be able to tell me, um, because these are all models after sort of this Petrarchan ideal of beauty. So when we see these three women all together, what are some features that we see right off the bat that they seem to have in common or that we might say, hey, I'm starting to see what beauty might be to a 15th century audience? Long neck. Long neck, yeah. Super long neck. And that is one thing that Petrarch talks about. Very, very long neck. Yeah, and, and they emphasize, right? And, and we see also, these are all in profile, right? The early convention for both men and women is in profile, right? And that comes from classical antiquity, from metals, right? But what we see is women stay in profile a lot longer, right, than men do. Men turn to the front and women stay to the side. Part of that is, well, you could much better see that long, gorgeous neck when they're to the side, right, to a certain extent. What else do we notice that we would see they have in common? Oh, well, you know, it is, it is Renaissance Italy after all, right? <laughs> But, joking aside, right, but they're all really pale, white, this very, you know, skin like snow, skin like milk, right? What else do we see? High forehead. Super high forehead. Everybody has these plucks back forehead. And in fact, they would. They would pluck them back. They would sort of shave them back. And you see them pulling the hair gets pulled so tight to emphasize that, right? What else do we see? Relatively thin lips. Yeah, we don't see we don't see a lot of Botox looking lips, do we? Yeah. But they are supposed to lips are supposed to be like rubies, right? Teeth like pearls. Although you never see the teeth, right? The idea is that, you know, teeth are like pearls, but we're never gonna know, right? Because they're not much. But ideally that's what they should look like, right? What else do we notice? How is their hair? Blonde. Everybody's blonde, right? And that was something else. Petrarch spends a lot of time talking about um, hair, long blonde hair, right, gleaming like gold. Um, and in fact, we know that some Renaissance women would even dye their hair to get that gold color, right? So all of them um, really fit into what Petrarch says. He also um, talks about, you know, they have really fine eyebrows. Um, they also fixate a lot on eyes, like dark, sparkling eyes, although in profile, it's a little bit hard to engage with the eyes, but that is something that the poets talk about a lot. Um, you know, also, um, firm breasts like apples, white as snow, also is um, very popular. Um, and, of course, though, they have to be good on the inside, too, yeah. right? So it's not just that, right? But in fact, so we look, here's three. I can give you three more. Right? That are all going to be very, very similar. That, you know, and we look at them and some of them we think, hmm, I'm not sure I would necessarily say beautiful when I look at them. Right? But it's beauty according to the standards of the time in terms of um, what they look like and also contemporary fashion. Because if we also notice something else that's going on with these ladies, everyone's got pretty exciting outfits on. There's a lot going on, really. Um, very elaborate costumes, they're wearing a lot of jewelry, they've got these elaborate headpieces, right? So it's also, you know, clothing and jewelry are markers of status and, and wealth and sometimes of lineage, but also the clothing and the jewelry kind of enhances the beauty of the woman, so also kind of tied into making this the complete package. And again, um, connected to marriage, this would be about Oh, it's so lovely. Look what she's bringing, the, all of this beauty. And then, you know, we have wealth, we have status, right? Um, and, and then, of course, you know, the other features are not quite the same which is, and she's going to be a great wife, she's going to be a great mother, very fertile, very, you know, you, this one is good, right? So we also see things, for example, a lot of use of the pearls, um, symbols of chastity, of purity, because, again, this idea of virtue being so um, important. Um, and the one on the right, this is um, Filippo Lippi, and he is often credited as being the one that sort of really comes up with the first kind of model and everyone kind of falls in line um, after that. So, again, you see a lot of consistency. Um, and, again, these are not portraits of individuals, right? These are types. These are reflections of larger social ideals and, and ideals specifically of beauty. Now, there are two of my favorites, right? Some that you might know. This one on the right you might know very well. Um, and this is um, Giovanna Tornamboni. Now, you can see there starts to be 
a little, a little bit of room to move in some of these ideals of beauty. She's not entirely blonde anymore. We start to see later in the 15th century, they're allowed to keep their own hair color, right? But again, we see her in incredibly elaborate dress. In fact, we probably pay more attention to that dress than we do to her, right? Um, and in fact, and I love it. So she's got all this stuff woven in. She actually has an L woven into her shoulder. Oh, that's her husband. Right? So she's branded, right? Lorenzo, this is his, right? And so, you know, we see that, we again, we see the jewelry. We also see the fact she's got a book back here. We're going to assume maybe it's a Bible and she's pious, right? So all this, you know, again, the, the ideal woman. And in fact, we think that this was probably commissioned after she had died. Um, and maybe marriage, maybe after she died in childbirth. So again, it was like, well, she did her duty, though. She's done, that was it. Like, the best thing she could do, right? So here, I love this one. It's another one, so we follow with these. Because why do we see here? Why do we start to notice a little bit? There's maybe some gender differences going on with men and, and women. It's sort of post term. We'll see that again in a moment. But I love this one, right? Again, woman very similarly to how we have seen her. I just love my husband. She's like, oh, how's it going? Inside, on the inside world. Right? Um, and he's in fact holding um, a, a, the um, emblem of his family. And she has actually embroidered into her sleeve the Italian word for loyalty. Okay. So, again, um, and, and you can see these swooping, I mean, these like foreheads that are just defy natural um, anatomy. Um, but again, the Lindy is, is always a good thing for him because he really does kind of establish uh, this type and you see that it endures. Okay. So, beyond this idea of just physical beauty and right, how important that is, there's also this belief that physical beauty shows on the outside what's on the inside, right? So that a virtuous, pure interior is going to be reflected on the surface, that beauty is going to show what's inside, right? That it's evidence of spiritual perfection, right? And this idea of linking external beauty with inner goodness, right? Again, a very popular idea during this period. And I just wanted to show you, this is a really interesting um, portrait by Leonardo da Vinci. And Leonardo da Vinci is, um, in so many ways, hard to shove into the general Renaissance categories, kind of a rebel ahead of his time in, in all things. Um, and his female portraits also um, are, look a lot different from others um, of his, his generation. And um, this one is, is sort of no different, although we're going to use it here as an example of he's still conforming to certain ideals of beauty. Right. Um, even though we have here in Geneva de Vinci a woman who was a poet, was an intellectual, um, and she actually, um, she's the daughter of a wealthy Florentine family, and she was a poet but was also the subject herself of a number of poems, um, writers constantly celebrating her beauty and virtue. And this is an interesting portrait because it actually has a reverse, and this is what you're seeing on the right is a reverse. Um, and behind her head, she actually has a big juniper plant behind her head, because that's Ginevra's juniper, right? And then we also see the juniper behind, again, memory of that. And then we see palm and we see laurel. Um, and laurel is frequently associated with poets um, or palms and laurels with victory and accomplishment. But she's got this inscription on the back that says, beauty adorns virtue. So again, this idea of these two things being completely intertwined, right? And that, again, beauty on the surface, right, revealed something about what was underneath, okay? Now, even when our ladies turn to look out at us, we still see a lot of the same ideals of beauty coming through that we saw in the profile. 